Hey there, guys. I hope you're having a great day. Today, I won't be able to give you class, but I wanted to leave a review for you. So um, you may practice and remember some of the themes that we have been discussing through the unit. So um, I will start. We will divide this session in three parts. So I really want to uh, be clear with this. Um, it will be divided in vocabulary, grammar, and some reading skills. Okay, so um, any question that you might have, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be more than happy to help you. So I will be sharing my screen. We're going to check for our review. All right. So just a second. First, I want to uh, I want you to remember for this little quizlet that I have for you. And these are vocabulary words. These are for the unit number one. This is about, oh yes, uh, music, right? So let's check. We have gifted and remember that is ha having a natural ability to do one or more things extremely well. Energetic is a very active and physically and mentally. I think that um, with the images, you catch that, right? I hope so. Imaginative, able to think of new and interesting ideas. Passionate, showing a strong liking for something and being very dedicated to it. Centric, do you remember what eccentric was? I remember that we read about Beethoven. He was an eccentric person, right? Behaving in an unusual way or appearing different from most people. Difficult. Uh, this meaning like an adjective for someone, to describe someone. Remember that we are describing personalities and um, this is a person who is never satisfied and hard to please. Okay, then we have moody, and it's becoming quickly and easily annoyed or unhappy. Egotistical, believing oneself to be better or more important than other people. These words are in your book and as well, but I wanted to do it like more um, appealing to you right? So you don't get bored easily. <laughs> so egotistical is believing oneself to be better, more important than other people. Remember your ego, egotistical. And we have another word that describe music. We have beat. Remember, this is a basic rhythm. And we have melody and it's the sequence of notes that makes music so satisfying. Then we have lyrics, and it's the text of a song. Then we have sound, and it's a vibration. Remember that sound uh, is a vibration, and vibration goes through waves through the air, and then we hear it because we're able to catch that. So that is sound, a vibration that travels through material. Voice, a sound produced in a person's larynx and uttered through the mouth. The, I know that these vocabulary words may seem easy, but sometimes we have to um, get used to hear and remember what they mean, okay? Performance, it's a public representation or exhibition, sentimental, 
overly emotional or romantic. You may hear some sentimental music and that is fine, it's serious, not fun or happy. Commercial. Of little artistic value focused on popular success. You know, right? There, there are some masterpieces in music, but as well, you can have commercial music. Like for brands, for example, or very popular music. Those are commercial ones. We have dated. Do you remember what dated was? Not up to date, not modern. Okay. There are some words that may be difficult or hard to remember, but the more you use them in a sentence, the better. Repetitive. Always repeat the same beat, lyrics, or melodies. Annoying disturbing or irritating, annoying. For example, if you don't like something that might cause you an annoying uh, reaction, you are annoyed by it. Boring, not interesting, sorry, not interesting. Depressing, make you feel sad. Loud, marked by intensity or volume of sound. Offensive, causing someone to feel deeply hurt, upset, or angry. It's pretty clear and easy, guys. Silly, foolish, weird, strange, or mysterious. So that would be the vocabulary part. I think that you might have not... Uh, encounter any difficulty with vocabulary. So um, in your exam, you will encounter this, this series, and you have to choose the correct word, okay? Then we have grammar, of course. Grammar, your favorite part. <laughs> Remember gerunds and infinitives? We are going to review them right now. Okay, so remember this, a gerund is the ing form of a verb acting as a noun or a verb, right? So we have that the gerunds end in ing, remember? And a gerund is acting as a noun, as a subject, for example, a subject of anything you would like to say, right? So swimming, calling, eating, remember that is ing. Then we have infinitives. Infinitives are uh, characterized by this in a specific, the to and the base form of a verb, okay? To cry, to laugh, to eat, to know, and to watch. Infinitives is like forever, right? You don't know in which tense you are talking about. You just, you just know that it's an action. And in English, infinitives goes with a to. I wanted you to remember this because that is uh, really important in parts of speech, okay? In this case, um, if we are going to use them as the subject of a sentence, all right? Especially, uh, just remember that gerunds are verbs acting as a noun. I think that we are clear with this. Anyhow, these presentations are in your Edo platform, so you can check them out. Okay. I would like to remember you this um, 
parts of speech, let's say like in a sentence, and the subject is the person or thing that we are uh, describing, or in that case, um, checking for the action. The object is the thing that receives the action. And the subject complement is a word or phrase that says something about the subject. It's like this, uh, the complement or like the little details about the subject, right? We're going to check a couple of things more. So when we have gerunds acting for a subject, remember that we are stating that the gerund goes first and then the verb, okay? And here we have some examples. I'm not going to say every one of them, but at least uh, to remember you that how, how they work, right? So driving fast is dangerous. So we are talking about driving as a noun or as the subject right, as the subject of um, the sentence. So driving fast. Fast is uh, modifying driving, and the verb is, okay, the verb here is the verb to be, is dangerous. Okay. Then we have it as an object, okay? We have a subject, in this case, for example, in the, this first one. I avoid calling the doctor too often. In this case, the subject is I, the verb is avoid, and the object that is telling more details or modifying, helping, let's say like that, helping the verb, okay? I avoid calling the doctor too often. What I like to do in this case is to um, quit this little word in this case, it is a gerund. But if you cross it out, would it make any sense? I think that no. So the object makes the sense. And of course, we can use gerunds as an object. Excellent. So then we have subject complement. And we have that subject. Uh, for example, in this one, I always dreamt of going abroad. Subject is I, the verb is dreamt, and the complement dreamt of going. Uh, if you can see here, this little word is off and is a part of the complement. So you can, um, you can guide yourself by it. Of, at, these little words tell you a lot. So I hope that you don't have any question, but if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask, guys. I will be more than happy to help you. So if you go to your page 123 and four, um, there are some verbs followed by gerunds in a very specific way. Okay, so the examples are admit that he admitted cheated on cheating, sorry, on the test. So admit is a verb. And of course, they are telling us that there are some specific verbs that of course are followed by gerunds. So they are followed by other verb, but the the thing is here to check what the gerund is telling you, what the gerund is trying to do there, right? We, we can have two verbs, but of course, we have to check what is this verb doing by standing in front, let's say like that, um, of the main verb, okay, is modifying, is helping, is uh, doing an auxiliary uh, function, or is just a, a rule. In this case, is a rule. 
So next, these specific verbs and the, the ones that are on the list, we can place gerunds. Okay, so um, I hope this was clear enough. And of course you have here a little list and it's always good to check that out, okay? Excellent, so we must hurry up with infinitives. As well, they function as a subject, an object, and a subject complement. A subject can be the action as well. We already know that gerunds, both gerunds and infinitives talk about actions, but of course, the subject, in this case, the noun is a verb, and that is um, functioning as that. Okay, let's 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 check this out. Or this one. To visit the Grand Canyon is my lifelong dream. To visit, we are talking about visiting as the main thing in a sentence. Okay, so to visit the Grand Canyon is my lifelong dream. We are saying that to visit is my life drunk, long dream. Um, sorry guys, I think, okay, okay. I thought um, I had technical problems, but not. Yeah, the subject here, the main action is the verb to be, is, right? But we're talking about here another action. And this action is the, well, taking like the noun of a subject, subject form. <laughs> so to visit, we're talking about an action as the main thing in the sentence, okay? So the grand, to visit the Grand Canyon, this is a complement. And is is the main verb, my long, long dream, the length, the, Subject complement could be in this case, okay? So I think that we're clear with that. Then we have the object. Can use of the object of the verb. Something that complements the verb, that tells us details about a verb, okay? So I want to go, really easy. Remember that when we have objects, you can cross the objects out and you can ask yourself, does it make any sense? If it does not, it means that it complements something, right? The object. So I want to go. To go here is an infinitive, right? And it's functioning as an object because want is the main verb of the sentence. And yes, I want to go. Then we have a subject complement. Um, and these are very specific because they are um, sharing this with the word be, but we already know that be is a verb to be, right? So his job is to motivate people. You're telling that to motivate an infinitive, to motivate is his job, okay? It wouldn't be any sense either if we cross this out to motivate. And it's, I know that is a subject complement, but it's all also a, um, an important part of the sentence. So his job is to motivate people. Imagine his job is people. Wouldn't be any sense. You need subject complements and sometimes for infinitives, depending on the verb that you are using, right? So let's continue because we're gonna run out of time. And yes, there are verbs and adjectives followed by infinitives. Another list. Don't worry because you can check that out. And here we have the examples. 
And here we have the list. You can check it out on your book. And as well, this one. And yes, that would be it for grammar, that part of grammar. Then we have present perfect continuous. And this is a tense, okay? You can go to your page uh, 16. And I want to remember this, present perfect. It's always good to remember because you usually um, forget this kind of stuff. So present perfect is used to talk about an indefinite time in the past. When we have definite times, we are talking about um, simple past, okay? But it's just for you to know and to remember. It's always good to refresh um, the knowledge, right? Oh, sorry guys. Here is my little dog. Um, subject, we have uh, like the formula, right? The formula for present perfect is subject plus then we have the auxiliary, the verb to have. And this depends obviously on the subject. Remember that if you have um, I, you, we, they, you use have. And if you have she, he, it, you use has. And then of course the past participle. Not the, sim not the past, the past participle. And if you check your, your, your list of verbs, yes. <laughs> um, the last column is usually the past participle form of a verb, just for you to know. And it's a little refresher here, and we are going to continue. Yes, I always, I already mentioned this, but yes, have has. You have, you use have for I, you, we, they, and has for he, she, it. A little trick that helped me a lot was, I only knew has. Yes, I only knew has, and the rest was have. And then it made a lot of sense. <laughs> so you can, if you, if you don't remember this, you can uh, remember that has is for he, she, it, and then the rest is for have. That is a good like form to remember that, right? So let's continue. So present perfect continuous is used to talk about an action that has started in the past and is still continuing in the present. So you have a place in the past and then the time is running and you are still in the present. And of course, that, that action is still continuing. That's why it's called continuous. And why am I telling this? Um, because it's obvious in some way. It's a little bit obvious, but if you know why you are using that tense, it's pretty easy to, when you um, check a sentence, it's very easy to identify what you are talking about, okay? So um, the formula here is the subject, of course, the auxiliary, we always use have. Then you have a little word here, been. Been, it's the past participle of the verb to be, okay? Grammar rules. And then we, have, we go with present participle, okay? The verb forming ing, because ing, remember that um, is continuing, right? The verb in ing can be a gerund. Remember that we um, have mentioned gerunds? Of course, they are not. They are not gerunds. Because remember that gerunds function as a noun. Right now, we are using it as a verb, okay? So we have to use present participle, all right? 
we're going to check this out. Okay. With the formula, guys, it's really easy. You just have to check for your subject, your auxiliary, your verb to be, and your verb form in ing. It's almost a riddle. <laughs> so let's check statements. Mia has been competing in fluid competitions recently. So there you have it. Subject, auxiliary, the verb to be, been in a past participle form and the present participle, competing. Look, here we have the ing and the been, okay? We shall continue. Questions, of course, we were going to uh, check for questions because questions have a particular thing. Do you remember what it is? I think that you do. Auxiliaries first. You always, always, always in tenses um, use the auxiliary first. Okay, the auxiliary, the verb to have. And depending on the subject, you have to uh, check for if it's have or has. You have to check that on your own, but have plus subject plus been and um, present participle. So has Mia been competing in fluid competitions recently? It's really easy, guys. You just have to like imagine a puzzle and switching things. And if it's the, if it is, and if it's the other thing, it's this, right? It's it's like a riddle and a game. <laughs> okay. Contractions, of course, it's an important thing because sometimes you um, you have to use contractions. And why do we use contractions? Because in English, for example, um, I have been going. If you, if you can hear, I've been, if I say it out loud and fast, I, the, I have, it's barely listen. So that's why we use contractions because we listen, we listen and uh, it's a grammar rule. Okay, so you can check that as well in your ego platform. And yes, contracted forms we have for I have been, I've been. It depends on which of the pronouns and the long forms you are contracting, okay? So I'm sorry guys, if you heard my little dog, he's, well, she, sorry. <laughs> She's kind of stressed. Um, so yes, you can check this here. And of course, there are some words that indicate um, important things in the tenses, okay? For example, for and since. Remember that this, um, these prepositions, I think, yes, if I'm not mistaken, these prepositions um, uh, help you, yes, help you because they are referring um, of time. They are talking about time. So of course you are going to use them in sentences referring to time, okay? For a specific amount of time, since you are uh, marking a um, specific date, let's say like that, or a specific um, time in the past, but that's like your start point. It's not the same to say for two years than since 2015, okay? Then we have recently, that started not long ago, and this week, month, year, today, all day, it's periods of time that are not finished. And it depends on the sentence. But the thing is that you have to um, 
be aware that these words are very important. Okay, so I think we're finished with this. And then I have you parts of a paragraph. Parts of a paragraph, it's really easy, guys. You just need to pay attention. And I wanted to uh, explain this by a hamburger paragraph. Topic sentence is the bun, okay? Topic sentence is a sentence that tells you the main idea. In every paragraph that you're reading, the main idea has, I mean, it will be in the first uh, part of a paragraph, okay? That's like, um, like the way to, to write, right? So this sentence tells the reader the main idea or what the paragraph will be about, okay? I think that we're good with that. Then we have the supporting sentence. The supporting sentence is going to give you details, okay? The sentence gives specific details relating to the main idea. So imagine that you have, for example, whales. Whales are mammals. And then you have a lot of supporting uh, ideas and explaining why whales are mammals, for example. Then you have, you can have a lot of supporting ideas or supporting sentences. You can have up to, I don't know, 50, depending on the, on the topic and depending on the length of the paragraph. But I think this is pretty, pretty clear, right? We have here another supporting sentences, the patty there, the vegetables, like the thing that gives the flavor, right? And then we have the concluding sentence. And the sentence refers to the topic sentence, of course, that sums up the main idea of the paragraph. It's very likely to be like or alike the topic sentence, but this is a concluding. So it's an idea that sums up the main idea, okay? Uh, whales are mammals because they are this, 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 and this. So uh, as a closure, for example, males are mammals because this, this, and this. Okay. I don't have the information, but it was just for you to imagine. Okay. Because and this is going to be um, on your exam. And I wanted to explain this in a very easy way. Okay, so we are just five minutes. And this, I have noticed that it's a little bit difficult for you and it's okay. Because idioms, they're easy. But you have to like give it a check there. So what is an idiom? is a group of words that has meaning that is different from the usual meanings of the separate words and has a figurative meaning. What does this mean? It's not a little or literal, sorry, <laughs> literal meaning, but um, if, you, if you can imagine what they are telling you, you can get an idea of that. That is an idiom. So a literal meaning is the most basic sense of a word. If I tell you candy, that is literal. I am telling you to think about a candy, right? But a figurative meaning is an idea that is different or interesting in order to create a mental picture that thing that I was talking about, right? To imagine, okay, imagine, for example, you say, roll with the punches. You're like, roll with the punches. Roll with the punches, right? And that like, mm, that cycle to roll with something tells you like, okay, problems, right? So 
To roll with the punches means that you have to go on or, yes, you have to go on with life difficulties, okay? That is an idiom and that is how English works. Okay, we, we will check an example. Cost an arm and a leg. Imagine cost an arm and a leg. If you if if you can like imagine that my new camera cost me an arm and a leg. The idiom cost an arm and a leg does not mean that you literally have to pay for something with an arm and a leg, right? The figurative meaning is that something is very expensive and costs a lot of money. Okay, that. That's the real meaning. Sorry, guys, I wanted to make this really quick. And I think that you are ready with this, um, this little brief that I made for you. So uh, I think that will be it. Thank you for your attention. I will be um, checking how everything went with your exam. I hope that you reviewed everything and you enjoyed doing your, doing your exam. So I will see you on next class. Bye.